Money does matter, and one of the things that the governments have done over time is make sure that there's probably enough money in place for students who want to go to college or university to do so. The whole affordability barrier, that's probably been dealt with, with good public policy. They've done a good job. The issue is that to go forward to bring groups of students that are not currently attending college or university into the system, we're going to have to go beyond those traditional measures. Uh, and that means uh, what we have to do is somehow get the idea of going on to post-secondary education into their heads when they're young, so they're thinking in that direction, and they're preparing for that possibility down the road. But when students decide, it's, it varies. Some students, you ask a lot of students, and they say, uh, I went around to cl my class last week at, at the university, and most of them said, I always knew. That's not in the standard economics model, that they came out into this world knowing that they were going to go to a university or, or college. Uh, so there's a, a variation. Some people decide quite early, some people decide later on, some, some people decide just towards the end of high school. But the emphasis of policy to this point in time has been almost predicated implicitly, more than explicitly, on this notion of students making these decisions sort of towards high school and so the emphasis was all on making sure that the student financial aid system was there, the tuition policy was in place so that they could afford to go. As opposed to saying, okay, we have to get to these students when they're young to put, again, this idea of going on to post-secondary education, college, university, whatever's good, at least that idea on the table so they can start thinking about it and then so they can prepare for it when they go. Now whether that's age 15, there's nothing magic about age 15, or 16, or 17, or 14, or 13. It's probably a continuum that varies from student to student, but it sure starts earlier than the end of grade 12. And again, you know, speaking to the value of the Youth in Transition Survey itself, it then tracks those students, so it takes that baseline mm. when mm. they're 15, looks at uh, you know, how they're doing academically, their academic performance overall, uh, some of their aspirations, and then it continues to follow them. So through mm -hmm. high school, completion of high school, into the post-secondary world, which could be the work world, it could be directly to college or university, it could be a pause year or mm -hmm. the victory lap, um, and then on to post-secondary, and then continues to track them as well uh, to the extent that it has. And that's where, again, uh, then with the five cycles of data that we have, which follows the sixth one coming out this spring, yeah, which follows them over an eight-year time span from 15 on, um, you can get a really good sense. And, and the sample for Ontario is substantial enough to do some of this tracking. Yeah, it's remarkable that the data are there, even at this regional level, and for Ontario, uh, that we can we can slice and dice these things to get that level of detail. It's remarkable. Well, I know Richard will probably have something to say on this because HECO has been at the forefront of this kind of research. Uh, that's the next step. And that next step is what we have to do more of. Going in and just, frankly, I think doing a lot of experiments. Finding out what works because we don't know what works. So going into high school and uh, uh, visits to institutions, taking kids actually onto the campus, uh, taking them to a college and university, bringing people from the colleges and universities into the schools. I would say working it into the curriculum, not a voluntary after school thing or something like that, because then you'll just get, you'll be preaching to the converted to a large degree. Uh, but just uh, experimenting what works, building things into the curriculum, comparing those who try it with those who don't, see what the results are, and that way we move our knowledge forward now we'll likely find some things that work. It, it, it doesn't have to be a high expense solution no. or highly sophisticated. No, absolutely. I think a lot of the biggest barriers are simply barriers of the mind. Uh, there are perceptions or myths that are held, that are held very deeply, um, that just are not accurate, that, that, don't, that aren't reflected in the facts. But a lot of students at, at that age um, are overwhelmed by what they perceive to be the cost or the anticipated cost of going to post-secondary, um, or they underestimate their, uh, or maybe they haven't explored enough. They haven't explored enough who they are, what really interests them, what they really want to do. So a lot of a lot of it is simply a matter of uh, better information, better delivered, and um, and and figuring out how to get you know people to think about their futures in a way that's better informed. 
and there might be some very low-hanging fruit. There's a wonderful example of, uh, and this goes against the needing to start early. I think we have to do some of that, but sometimes starting late might work too. There's this wonderful example in a, a school board in Texas. They were concerned about the going on to post-secondary education rates of their students. So they made it as a requirement of graduation from high school that they actually had to apply to a college or, or university. Well, so they all did it. And then since the local college, the main criterion for being accepted was simply that you'd finish grade 12, high school, they all started to get these acceptance letters. And then they got these acceptance letters, it was like, gee, going to college, what a concept. And the rate of participation in going on to college, it went through the roof. So you have a policy as simple as, and as cost effective, as cheap as, getting young people to fill out applications to go could be enough to get a substantial number of young people changing their minds, going on to whole new careers as a result. There's a benefit-cost analysis that's really attractive. So we can find some of those even as we start early. We'll work it out. We'll find out.